Hello everybody and welcome to the vlog. My name is Daniel and today we'll be talking about how to get called back in the syllabus ballroom competition. Alright, first a few items of business to get out of the way. First, I know I promised a live vlog of Holy Cross, but Holy Cross ended up being really, really busy, so I never got a chance to break up my camera. I'm really sorry there's no live vlog. There also isn't going to be a review, because any review that I come out with for Holy Cross is going to be horribly, horribly biased. All you need to know is that Holy Cross was a phenomenal competition, I was part of it, it was really great, and you all should come. Yay! Second item of business, you might be asking, Daniel, didn't you do a video about how to get called back in syllabus ballroom competition? Hello, welcome to my channel. I don't think you actually watched this video that I posted at the beginning of this year. But really, this is a second pass at the video to kind of synthesize all the information that I had in parts one and parts two, and to clean it up a little bit and make it a better video. So, without further ado, here's how to get called back in a syllabus ballroom competition. These rules come in three different sections. First, before the competition. Second, during your competitive round. And third, some extra tips and tricks. First off, before the competition. Rule number one. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. As you're practicing, make sure you're doing two things. First off, make sure you're getting advice from a good source. And second, make sure you're maximizing your time in practice. First off, whether you're getting instruction from a professional coach in the context of a private lesson or group lesson, or whether you have an advanced member of your team who has been getting good results in competition helping you out, make sure that you're being given sound information both in terms of technique and in terms of moves. Secondly, in terms of your practice, Make sure that you don't waste your entire practice simply going through choreography or going through routines. Work on your technique. Work on your connection with your partner. Work on your timing. There are only so many hours in a day and only so many minutes in an hour. Make sure you're using every single one of them to its maximum potential. Rule number two, look presentable. From the minute you step out on the floor, every judge, every spectator, and every other competitor can tell when you haven't put in the time that you need to put in to look presentable on the floor. If your hair is frayed and flying all over the place and it looks like you just rolled out of bed, or if your shirt or your skirt are wrinkled, you stick out on the competition floor and not for the good reason. Ballroom dancing is an art form as much as it is a sport, so make sure that you're putting an image out there that you can be proud of. In terms of costumes, especially at the syllabus levels, you don't need to spend a fortune on a dress or a tail suit in order to look good on the floor. Oftentimes you can find something at H&M or at The Gap or even at your Salvation Army that looks good. Girls, make sure you have a nice skirt of the appropriate length for smooth standard or for rhythm in Latin, and make sure you have a nice blouse or top. Guys, make sure you have a nice pair of black slacks, make sure you have black socks, not white socks, make sure you have a nice button-down shirt, and also a tie that you can wear for smooth standard that you can take off for rhythm in Latin. Also optional for smooth standard is a vest. Often a costume as simple as this can take you all the way into the open ranks. In terms of hair, make sure it looks presentable. Make sure it looks like you've actually done something with it. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing with your hair, make sure to ask somebody who's in the know. I myself have been the victim of many an errant hairstyling as evidenced by these photos right here. If you don't know what you're doing, ask for help. Clearly I should have. On to our second group of rules, during your competitive round. Rule number three, first on, last off. When you let out of the on-deck area and you can take your spot on the floor, make sure you step boldly and get to the place where you really want to go. Don't run there, don't rush there, but walk authoritatively, take up your space. If you can help it, try to position yourself at the front of your heat in the on-deck area so that you have your choice of areas on the floor that you can take. Otherwise, step boldly but controlledly and take your spot on the floor. Especially in the rhythm and the Latin, you're going to want to position yourself in a place that's going to get you maximum exposure to the judges. What I generally recommend is try to take the middle of one of the long sides. Try not to get stuck in the dead center of the floor where you're going to get lost in the forest of dancers. Try not to dance right in front of the judges because chances are they're going to look right past you. Also, try not to dance all the way off on one of the short sides unless it's clear and you know you're going to get noticed. If you're first on in your heat, you get your choice of where you want to go. Last off, after your dance is done and the music has ended, you want to collect yourself, you want to spin out your partner if you're the leader, or you want to spin out if you're the follower. You're going to bow to the audience, thank the audience, thank your partner, and then move off. Take your time and don't be in a mad rush to get off the floor. And if you take your time and keep yourself composed, you're going to be one of the last ones off the floor. This has two benefits. 
First off, it shows that you're in control and you know exactly what's going on to the point where you're not rushing off and trying to figure out what's going on next. Secondly, if a judge is missing a few couples on his or her sheet and you're one of the last ones off the floor, you might be one of their last numbers on the sheet. While we're on the subject of last stop and getting off the floor, make sure you maintain your composure until you're off the floor. I don't care if it was the worst round you've ever danced. I don't care if your partner forgot the entire routine. I don't care if you ran into 50 different people. I don't care if you tripped over your own shoelaces. Please maintain your composure until you're all the way off the floor. Don't be like these guys. Moving on to rule number four, which I would argue is one of the most important rules in all of competitive ballroom dance. Stay on time. For the love of all that is good and holy, please stay on time. Now we're all human. We all make mistakes. Sometimes it's difficult to find the beat of a really weird song. Sometimes we get super excited and we speed up. Sometimes we get a little lazy and we slow down. All of that is fine and well. Corollary to stay on time is get back on time if you manage to get off time. Especially if you're a newcomer and you're dancing cha-cha, listen out for your teammates in the stands. Chances are, if you're off time, you're going to hear this. Two, three, four, and one. And we are literally going to be clapping it out for you. Let's say you're not musically inclined, or let's say that you have trouble finding the beat. Hopefully your partner can and maybe he or she can get you started or get you back on if you've gotten off time. Rule number five, maintain your posture and maintain your frame. Especially at the syllabus levels, a lot of judges really want to see that you can stand up straight, that you can maintain a good top line and frame, and that you have good footwork. In terms of the posture, it's really easy in the middle of a competitive round to forget exactly where you are or focus more on the steps and what you're doing than keeping that nice posture. But somebody that really stands up tall and stretches their spine from their tailbone all the way to the top of their skull is going to get noticed on that floor. In terms of posture, one of my favorite ways to keep this in mind was given to me by my coach, Maya. Imagine that planted into your solar plexus right here in the middle of the boobs is a bat signal. And you want that bat signal to be able to shoot out into the sky so that all of Gotham will be able to see it. If you have your bat signal collapses down into the ground, no one is going to see it, and then Gotham burns and the Joker wins, and it's really not fun for anybody. Keep that bat signal aimed into the sky, make sure to keep your spine straight, and make sure to keep it up all the way throughout the competition. Now we're on to the third section of rules, which I've entitled Tips and Tricks. These are just a few of the things that I learned in the course of my own syllabus career that I've heard from other people that give you a better chance of getting noticed by the judges and getting down on their sheets. Rule number six, rotate. Let's take newcomer American Rumba for an example. Let's say the only move that you use is the American Rumba Box Basic. And let's say that you have the most beautiful Box Basic that anyone has ever seen. Well, that's all fine and well, but here's the problem. By the conventions of ballroom dance, the gentleman wears a number on his back. If he never rotates the Box Basic, the judges will never see his number. Across all four styles, make sure that you let the judges know what your number is so that they can take it down and you can make it into the next round. American Rhythm, for example. Cha-Cha and Rumba can turn to the left. In American Smooth, give them a pivot turn in your foxtrot or your tango. Don't make a judge have to work to see your number, because chances are if they have to, they're not going to go through the trouble. Rule number seven, smile and have fun. Unless you're in the tango, in which case, tango face. But if you're enjoying yourself out there on the floor, chances are we as your spectators are going to enjoy watching you. Now we're moving on to the last rule, rule number eight, which is the most objective of them all. Know what style you are dancing. As most of you who watch this channel know, I am an American style dancer. I do smooth and I do rhythm and I am very proud of it. As such, it is one of my biggest pet peeves when I see or hear somebody who thinks that rhythm is bad Latin and smooth is bad standard. Every dance in every style has a specific characterization to it. And your choreography and your basics can really help inform that characterization. American Rumba has a box basic. It's slow, quick, quick, or quick, quick, slow. It is not two, three, four as in international rumba. There is no mooch in the swing. There is a four walks back, but there is no mooch in the swing. There is no fan and hockey stick in bronze American cha-cha or rumba. Please do not put a fan or hockey stick in your bronze American cha-cha or rumba. Mambo is danced on the two. Salsa is danced on the one. If you are competing mambo, please dance it on the two. And if you're dancing a bronze American waltz, try to open up once in a while. Give them a butterfly. Give them a six count underarm turn. But break apart. You can do it in smooth. You can't do it in standard. 
So those are my rules for getting called back in a syllabus ballroom competition. These are things that I learned throughout the course of my own syllabus career, things that I learned from my friends, and things that I look for when I judge at competitions. One of the main reasons why I'm doing this video now is because we're entering the spring competitive semester and there are going to be a lot of newcomers out there on the floor entering their first competitions ever. So if you're a newcomer watching this video, I hope I've given you some handy tips and tricks. But more important than any of these rules is make sure to go out there and have the time of your life. Please have fun. Results are whatever, but as long as you're having fun, you're always going to be a winner. For the bronze, silver, and gold dancers, I hope that there is some useful information in this video for you as well. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed what you saw. Please make sure to leave a comment down in the box below. Do you agree with my list? Is there anything that you would add, that you would change, that you would delete? Make sure to let me know. And please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more ballroom related content. You can find the subscribe button right down below and you can also find it on my end screen. As always, thank you for watching this video and until the next time, bye!